Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the major regions of the brain. I mean in a brain, if you look at the different parts of the brain, what are the various regions of the brain? So that is what we will see here. So overall the human brain is divided into three main parts. The forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. So these are the three parts, three major parts of the brain. So here in this uh, structure of the brain, you can actually see this is the forebrain, this is the midbrain and this is the hindbrain. Now we will talk about the detail of the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain in the next few slides. So now we will talk about the forebrain in detail. So let us see what are the parts of the forebrain. What are the different the parts which together form the forebrain. So the first part and the most prominent or the most developed part of the forebrain or the brain rather is the cerebrum. So where is the cerebrum located? So this entire portion, this entire portion which you see here is the cerebrum. The next part is the thalamus. So where is thalamus? It is, the, it is present at the base of the forebrain, towards the base of the forebrain. So thalamus is located somewhere here in this region. So somewhere here you have the thalamus. Below the thalamus you have hypothalamus. So below the thalamus you have hypothalamus. And the olfactory lobes. The olfactory lobes are present towards the back side of the brain. So not this side, the other side which is not visible from here. So towards that side are present the olfactory lobes. So all these parts together form the forebrain. However, the cerebrum is the most prominent part and the most developed part as well. So let us try to see uh, what is cerebrum. Cerebrum is very very well developed in case of humans. Uh, it governs all the mental abilities like thinking, memorizing, learning, consciousness, etc. So basically we can say that the thought power, so power to think, that is present in the cerebrum and obviously that is very much developed in human beings. Not all animals have the ability of think and that ability to think. And that is why we say that human beings are one of the best animals just because of their power to think and this thinking ability is present in the cerebrum. It is the seat of intelligence. So we say right, we often say that okay this person is very intelligent that means he has a lot of brains that is how we say it and uh, literally. So that's because your brain is the place where your intelligence is there and that too if you want to be more specific, intelligence is present in the cerebrum. So this enables to understand things through sense organs. As I said you before also, like when you see something, the eyes just help you to see it. It doesn't interpret what you saw. So that interpretation is done by the brain and that interpretation is done in this region of the brain. So there are different lobes which are present in the brain. The cerebrum is divided into different sections and each section is for a specific purpose. For example, there is the occipital lobe which is for visual perception. So where is the occipital lobe? So this portion is the occipital lobe. So this one is the occipital lobe and it is used for visual perception. So whatever you see, you need to interpret. How do you know that you saw a tiger or you saw a, um, say, a dog? So that is being interpreted by this occipital lobe of the cerebrum. Similarly, there is another lobe called the temporal lobe, which is the auditory lobe. So where is the temporal lobe? This one is the temporal lobe. So it helps us to interpret whatever sounds we heard. Like the sound of a tiger. If you hear that uh, roar of the tiger, you get to know that, okay, this is a tiger. So how do you interpret that sound? That is done by the temporal lobe. Frontal lobe for all the muscular activities. So this is the frontal lobe. This portion is the frontal lobe. It is present on the front also. Like where we have our forehead. So that area 
basically the frontal lobe is located and it controls the muscular activities for example you want to move your hands up you want to move your hands down you kind of you want to do any sort of movement that is all controlled by the frontal lobe parietal lobe for touch temperature smell and consciousness and where is this parietal lobe this is the parietal lobe so you see that the cerebrum is also divided into various different sections and each section has its own job. So everybody does their own job and as a result cerebrum is very very well developed. So let us look at the structure of the cerebrum. Now the cerebrum is longitudinally divided into two halves and each half is known as a cerebral hemisphere. So one is the right cerebral hemisphere and the other one is the left cerebral hemisphere. So if you look at it from the back side, you can actually see how it is divided into two halves. This is one half and this is another half. So this half is the left cerebral hemisphere and this half is the right cerebral hemisphere. So these are the two halves and what divides it into two halves? So now, okay, let us first talk about what are they associated with. Now the right cerebral hemisphere is associated with creativity and music. So this is all about your creativity, how creative you are in doing things, how artistic you are. So all those are located in the, all those sections are located in the right cerebral hemisphere. Whereas the left cerebral hemisphere is more about computation and analysis. That is why you would have seen that some people are very good at calculation. They can calculate things well, they can analyze things well. So if you give them a problem statement, they can actually analyze it and they can find out solutions to that. So they are very good at those problem solving skills. So that means their left cerebral hemisphere, the areas in their left cerebral hemispheres are really developed and really good. Whereas there are another set of people who are very creative, even though they are not very good in their maths or they are not very good in their calculation part, but they are very creative. They can do new things. They can do the same thing in a very creative way, in a very different way. They are very artistic set of people. So for them, their right cerebral hemisphere is really, really good. So that is how different sections of the cerebrum actually performs different job. Now, the fibers that connect these two hemispheres. So here you have fiber which actually connects the two hemispheres and that is known as the corpus callosum. So corpus callosum is that set of fiber which connects the right and the left cerebral hemispheres. So now another important term when we talk about cerebrum that is the gray matter and the white matter. You would have often heard of these terms gray matter. Like somebody who is very intelligent, people often say that he has got a lot of grey cells. I mean, that's, that's how people use these terms. So today you will get to know what exactly is the grey matter and the white matter. So grey matter and white matter are nothing but the regions inside the cerebrum. So if you look at the cerebrum as a whole, you will see that the outer portions are grayish in color and that is called gray matter whereas the inner portions are white in color and it is called white matter. Now why is the outer regions gray in color and why are the inner regions white in color? Let us have a look at that. So gray matter uh, refers to the layer of cells covering the cerebral hemisphere. So it is like the outer layers of the cerebral hemisphere. So you can say the outer part actually. So this is also known as the cerebral cortex. Generally cortex is the term which is used for outer layer of anything. So the outer covering or the outermost layer is often called cortex. So the cerebral outermost layer is cerebral cortex which, which is grey in colour and that is why it is also known as grey matter. Now this region is grey in colour due to a high concentration of neuron cell bodies. So a lot of neuron cell bodies are situated here. So the cell bodies give them that greyish colour, this outermost layer. Now this area performs several complex functions, for example uh, memory, 
thinking, intelligence, all these things are located or all these things happen from this area. So this area is neither sensory in function nor motor in function. So sensory means it will only interpret things which the sensory organs see or hear or smells. So it will only interpret the uh, interpret the information received from the sensory organ. So this region is neither completely sensory nor it is completely motor in nature. Motor means something which is related to the movements. So it, these areas are known as the association areas. So it contains the association areas. Association areas are those regions which are neither sensory nor motor in nature. So association areas are neither sensory nor motor in nature. So it is responsible for memory and communication and all such complex activities and that is why you would have often seen that somebody who is very intelligent or somebody who has a very strong memory people often say that he has a lot of gray cells okay and the next one that is the white matter it is the inner part of the cerebral hemisphere so here you can see the inner part so this inner part is the white matter and the outer part is the gray matter so now why is it white in color? It is due to the presence of the myelinated nerve fibers. So now as you remember this is how the uh, neuron looks like. Right? This is how it looks like. So this is the cell body. This portion is the cell body and this part is the axon. And this axon might be covered by a myelin sheath. So now it, in the cerebrum, it has been observed that the cell bodies, the portion of the cell body is located towards the outer side and the axon part which is myelinated is located towards the inner part. Now due to the presence of this myelinated nerve fibers, the inner part is all white. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.